There is much more to the forest than what we can see. Walking through the forest, breathing fresh air creates a feeling of lightness. The forest has always awakened a magical, somewhat mysterious feeling in me. Perhaps because of its age and longevity, it seems to me that the forest has been there forever. Earth is home to more than three trillion trees and more than 70,000 species of trees. They evolved around 370 million years ago with a tradition of longevity and some species reaching up to several thousand years. This is probably the reason that when we are surrounded by a dense network of trees, we can really feel this ancient wisdom and knowledge that has been passed down through the generations. So, how do trees think, talk, and feel, and what can we learn from them? Today, we will talk about the secret life and the hidden power of forests. Mutualism, a symbiosis relationship, is when two organisms of different species work together, each benefiting from the relationship. This friendly relationship is a fundamental part of many organisms' biology. Like here, in this example of the oxpecker and zebra, oxpeckers land on these zebras and eat ticks and other parasites that live on their skin. The oxpeckers get food, and the zebra gets pest control, or in this case, bees and flowers. Bees and flowers have evolved together for millions of years. It is a mutual relationship where the bee is provided with food and the flowering plants get to reproduce. But the most remarkable partnership, one we can't see, is perhaps between fungi, trees, and plants. Fungi have long been known to form symbiotic relationships with trees exchanging nutrients and helping trees absorb water. However, scientists have now discovered that these relationships extend beyond individual trees to form a complex network of underground communication and cooperation. Trees communicate and cooperate through a fungal web. This network is made up of mycorrhizal fungi, which form connections with the roots of trees and other plants. So, how is this working? The term mycorrhiza just means fungus-infested root. The fungus covers the outermost fine roots with a thick network, mycelia, of closely woven fungal threads forming a coat of fungus. Approximately one-third of the fungi growing in our forests are mycorrhizal fungi. This exchange between the tree and the mycorrhizal fungus is truly something special. While the tree feeds the fungus with sugar as a product of photosynthesis, it receives various nutrients from the fungus in return, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which the fungus takes up from the finest soil. This fungi-tree network relationship is vital for maintaining the health of our forest ecosystems. But in recent decades, scientists have recognized that not only mushrooms and trees have this graceful relationship, but that trees also have a unique relationship between themselves. If I may say so, this is really cool. But why is a tree such a social being? Why does it share its food with individuals of the same species and so carefully nurture? The reasons are the same as in human society. Together is better. A single tree is not a forest, nor can it create a locally balanced climate, so it is at the mercy of wind and weather. The first indication that trees might actually work together came in the early 1980s study. Based on this research, they established that trees transmit resources and information from one tree through the mycorrhizal fungal network to another tree. For saplings growing in particularly shady areas, there is not enough sunlight reaching their leaves to perform adequate photosynthesis. For survival, the sapling relies on nutrients and sugar from older, taller trees sent through the mycorrhizal network. Although trees were more famous for competing, these studies show another side of nature, these lives and their cooperation. And yes, we cannot talk about this idea of 
cooperation between soil, fungi, and trees without mentioning one of the most important scientists on this topic, ecologist Suzanne Simard. Through their research, Dr. Simard and others have discovered that mother trees are the biggest trees in the forest and they are connected and communicate with the other trees and plants in the forest. Mother trees in this way act as central hubs, communicating with the young seedlings around them. In a single forest, a mother tree can be connected to hundreds of other trees. But we have one problem. Which trees do you think should be cut down first? Yes, we are known to go to the biggest, oldest trees or log the entire forest. These trees bring the most value, but if we cut too many of these mother trees, the forest as a whole will start to decline. Let's hear what Dr. Suzanne said about this. We don't need to cut so much. We don't need to be managing our systems so that they're on the brink of collapse all the time, which is basically what that allowable cut is. It's like, how much can we take before we destroy the whole system? Let's move back and say, let's take a lot less and leave a lot more behind. And we can use partial cutting, but take a lot less. Then we're going to be on the road to recovery. Yes, we can all agree with Dr. Simard. When we see this beautiful connection between mother trees, seedlings, and other plants, and how these relationships enhance the resilience of the forest. More connected forests are diverse, healthy, and better equipped to cope with climate change. For us, it is very important how we behave in the future. And remember, there is nothing wrong with having a tree as a friend. They are good listeners. They make the oxygen for us to breathe and sometimes give us delicious fruits. What more can we ask? Maybe some shade on hot summer days? We are so similar to forests. We can learn from the forest. They're caring societies. What I learned from the trees helped, helped me solve my own problems or deal with them. Because these trees, they cycle our water, they clean our air, they store carbon, they house biodiversity. These creatures are so important in our lives. And, and if we lose them, we lose ourselves. Did you learn something new in this video? I hope so. Click subscribe and go with us through the most interesting world of nature. See you in the next video, Nature's Code.